It's 10 questions on sci-fi novels with comedian and writer Andy Peters. This is Trivia with Buds. it be and welcome to another episode of the trivia with buds podcast i'm your host ryan buds and i am a trivia host in southern california i'm recording this in my den with the windows open it's getting to be fall in california so we got a nice breeze coming in on a sunday night here and i'm about to crack a beer and uh just sit back and watch some netflix after i'm done recording this little intro but i'm glad you are listening to this show on whatever day you're listening to it on and uh, we put out this show every single day so if you like trivia if you like pop culture, you're in the right place. Today's episode is all about novels, especially of the sci-fi variety. Uh, I haven't read an actual fiction book in a while for maybe like over a year, year and a half or so maybe. So I could use something good. What are you reading, listener? Fine, fine listener. Let me know in a tweet at Ryan Buds, B-U-D-D-S on Twitter, or drop me a line anytime about anything at RyanBuds at gmail.com. I would love to hear uh, your book list or your late summer reading list so I could hop on and grab some stuff from my local library to read. Today's guest is comedian Andy Peters. He's hilarious. He's a very funny dude known for streaming of consciousness comedy and he's a great joke writer and he's got some uh, some great clips online and recently one went viral with dry bar comedy on facebook so i'm going to play that very viral clip from andy peters right now you're the person i hate <laughs> at the grocery store it's just like boop, boop, boop. well i'm like i need help from a person who did this job I'm like boop, boop, boop. I just won't go help him And I got in trouble last week. I was in the self-checkout at my local grocery store, and the pit boss of the self-checkout, who used to have the job that I took, used to be the cashier of kiosk number six. Now he's just fuming, just fuming. And it was humid, and the stickers fell off my Chiquita bananas. And I didn't know that banana codes are 4011. Does anybody know that? Just up there with three bananas. That's how I roll. Three whole bananas. And he comes popping in with all this information that I didn't study. He's like, you, you're not putting in, you're putting in, you got all your stuff in the bagging area before it's bagging time, first of all. That's my first note. He's giving me cashier notes. Like I'm gunning for his former position. He's like, yeah, you're, you clearly don't got it, kid. You don't got it. You don't got what it takes. You're not punching in 4011. You got to scoot it, scoot it, and boot it. Service with a smile, and I'm just mad. I got fired. I got fired from a job that wasn't even my job. I got fired from being a customer at that grocery store. They kicked me out. They're like, Put it, we're giving you two-week notice. Two weeks. You can shop here for two weeks. <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it when somebody I know has uh, the ability to write such great jokes and perform them and then get them to uh, be seen to the most people with uh, the work of a viral video. So great job, Andy. Uh, I worked with Andy on Nickelodeon's Crash Leets, and we're going to jump into some quick questions with him on sci-fi novels in just a second. This is a fun chat, and there's a lot of banter in between the questions, so sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice 20, 25-minute episode right now. Here we go. Standing here in my den in front of a microphone talking to a very funny friend of mine. His name is Andy Peters. What's up, Andy? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good pretty good. Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a bit. You and I know each other from working on a few different TV shows. Specifically, I think about two or three years ago, we met uh, working on a show called Crash Leets for Nickelodeon. Of course. And uh, you and I of bonded the quickly. Crash, the Crash, as I called it. <laughs> the Crash, yeah. We uh, we bonded quickly as wrestling fans and uh, mm-hmm. and as lovers of hats. Mostly you. I don't wear as many hats, but you you have a good collection of good hats. Yeah, I'm definitely a hat man of comedy. I got um, more and more hats. I think from that job, I haven't worn it in a while, but I have my Crashly, official Crash Leaks hat. I was very happy that we got hats when that show wrapped. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
That was uh, that was a fun show to work on. If people don't know it that are listening, it's a Nickelodeon show. Uh, it was hosted by Rob Gronkowski and a bunch of other different uh-huh. athletes, and we'd play funny internet clips that were kind of more family friendly than, say, a Tosh Pointo or ridiculousness. And uh, you and I got to work on some sports packages, uh, or specifically some wrestling packages, which was cool. Yeah, that was amazing. And they, um, yeah, so I was a writer, and you put together the clips, and we worked together, and I even got to be on camera a little bit. I think at one point I played uh, Brandon's um, corner man, his cut man in a boxing <laughs> sketch. That's that right. Did. That's right. Yeah, uh, you guys did some fun stuff with the writers where you kind of got to be in certain scenes and things. Yeah, and I was officially handed, I think I was sort of the captain of team wrestling episode. I really pushed for a wrestling episode. And um, yeah, so I remember, I think you and me worked pretty closely on picking uh, proper wrestling clips and good internet wrestling clips and writing the wrestling jokes. Yeah, And yeah, um, yeah I got the Gronk to put me in a sort of, I taught him how to do like a, like a sort of choke, like a, uh, not really rear naked choke, well, like a, like a side choke, like a classic wrestling choke. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that was, uh, he, he, people always ask me like, what's he like? And I'm like, he's exactly how you'd imagine him to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, uh, there was definitely, like, no difference in his persona than what you would expect yeah. um, when working with him, too. Like, his delivery, everything was very uh, gronk, for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah. and so, and, but getting him to do anything was, was quite easy. I didn't know, because, uh, if you remember, there was a long stretch when we were working on that show where we didn't know who our host was going to be. So we were yeah. sort of writing a TV show in a very, like, limbo of just writing general jokes for clips and writing packages and making um, a clip show without knowing who was going to deliver it. Sure. And then Gronk came along and took the hosting job and just played right along. Like, he was really eager to do everything that we threw in front of him. And we also have to shout out Stevie and Brandon, who are the other two hosts, who are also uh, very, very good at sort of... um, doing the host duties, kind of carrying it in and out of each segment. And then Gronk was just there to be sort of a, a giant little kid. Of <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. The whole package yeah. is really just like uh, those hosts and uh, the work you guys did as writers and the fun we got to have as segment producers finding those clips was just all in all one of the funnest jobs I've probably ever had in the TV industry. So uh, super yeah, glad uh, to be good, working on the whole that. thing. Yeah, the whole thing was a good learning process for me of how uh, shows like that work. I never worked on like a clip show and didn't know how like getting clips on TV work, but yeah, now I know. Now we know, and knowing's half the battle. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a quick battle right now and some sci-fi novel trivia. And uh, I hit you okay. up. I said, "What would be some stuff that you would be good at?" And you said, uh, "WCW Cruiserweight Division," which yeah. I love, and we might do on a future episode. That's a very inside wrestling episode for wrestling fans out there. Uh, the cruiserweights yeah. name name like I don't know three cruiserweights so people know who we're talking about. Well, that's yeah. I mean, you said be specific, and that is probably I. I always cite that as my favorite, um, very specific. Uh, era of wrestling is yeah. when it was kind of what got me into what is now the sort of like Indian high flying style of wrestling. Is sure it was the introduction of like the Rey Mysterios and Eddie Guerrero's of the world. I I, I totally agree, and uh, I think yeah. a lot of uh, young NXT stars probably owe a lot to the cruiserweight division, watching tapes yeah. and things like that. So yeah. very cool stuff. Uh, you said that you said sci fi novels, and then what was the third thing you said? Do you remember? Um, I think it was British. Uh, That's right, British sitcoms. British comedy. I'm so, a big fan of just like old British stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All three of those uh, really would hit the nail on the head for what I like to do on this show, which is those very specific things. We did uh, an episode with Jen Wojnar, who worked on Crash Leads as well. Um, oh yeah. Her and her friend did an episode where the topics were British TV shows and breakfast foods. Uh, so if you want to scratch your itch of British TV shows, go back and check that out. I bet it was about a year ago at this point. If you go okay. back, if you go back on the feed, you could play along and uh, anyone listening can go back and check that episode out. Uh, but right now we're going to do 10 questions on sci-fi novels. We'll kind of talk through them and see what you know. I don't think I went too hard on you, but we'll find out. Have you read a lot of sci-fi okay, novels? Okay, we'll see. I mean, yeah, it's probably been a while since I've read any of these, but yeah, let's try it. I've, I 
was like a big sci-fi novel nerd when I was a kid, and okay. have gone back recently and read a lot of them. So we'll see. Let's have see. you Let's read? Have you read some young adult stuff like that has come out in the last fifteen years or so? Or, or not so much. Um, not really, but yeah, maybe. I don't know <laughs> of it. Sure, and a lot of that stuff might have been turned into a movie, and maybe you saw the movie, so we'll see what right, happens. Right, Here right. we go. All right, let's see how many you get out of 10. Question number one. Who wrote books titled The Illustrated Man and The Martian Chronicles? Uh, Ray Bradbury. Nice job from Waukegan, Illinois, one oh. of my favorite authors of all time, and uh, Martian mm-hmm. Chronicles. I love the idea that we'd go to Marsh, uh, Mars and just screw it up like immediately with that book. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we... that that whole idea, like, I just uh, finished watching um, the Hulu version of the Mission to Mars with, with Sean Penn, and it's yeah. a very different. Ray, Ray Bradbury's take on what happens on Mars is way different than probably, like, what we're headed to in real life. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, question number two. Andy Weir, W-E-I-R, wrote what novel that turned into a movie starring Matt Damon? The Martian. That was The Martian. Did you read that book or see that movie? I did. I both. I read, uh, I got really into the book and I, I believe I read it over one play, uh, plane trip. Oh, nice. Uh, I forget from going back in there. I really hit that book hard and loved it. Loved the movie. And I actually met Andy Weir. I was the comic at a, um, the planetary society, which he's a member of, yeah. uh, did this like banquet and I was a comedian and I got to meet him and tell him in person that he's amazing. That's fantastic. And another stuff's really good too. He has a new one, a new book. Uh, that's really good. Now, as a I can't think. as a stream of consciousness kind of comedian, where you're going up a lot of the time and just making funny out of uh, things that are happening around you, did you ever did you find like a need to like you know connect with somebody like that after you saw them? Was it before or after the show you realized he was there? Oh, I think yeah. I think it was backstage that I realized. I knew he was on the. Uh, like, it was like everybody of the science world was on this thing, and I was very baffled as to why I was booked, because it was <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye the Science oh Guy, my gosh. Andy Weir, all these uh, Star Trek cast members, and me, and it was <laughs> <laughs> really strange. Oh, that's so I amazing. Was, I was extremely, this was like two years ago, and it was a Planetary Society's anniversary big gala uh, in Pasadena. It was a big theater show. And I did like sketches and did some stand up. And uh, I remember just being like so starstruck <laughs> by all these like science greats. And oh my God. None of them knew who I was. Neil deGrasse Tyson was like, oh, I love comedians. And he kind of like, <laughs> we took a picture together. But yeah. I was very like, not, did not belong. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It was great. It was I a love, lot of fun. I love the idea of uh, someone going like, "Oh, I like I like comedians," you know, and you're and you're like, "Well, I am one of those." Yeah, that's what that was all they could. All of these <laughs> like genius, brilliant minds, all they could muster towards me was, "Oh yeah, stand up's good." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stand up's fun. I'm glad you're here. That was the consensus. None of them knew they like I was in this green room and everybody knew each other and I was just kind of there like, "Hi, I'm Andy. I'm a." comedian <laughs> that's like me that's, that's like me not being a sports guy and i walk into a super bowl party and i'm like football all right you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. that's exactly how it felt like they were actually talking about there was a time where like uh uh nasa scientists were talking to neil degrasse tyson about like potential trips to mars and like andy weir was talking with them and i was like this is insane <laughs> like, this is true. like i was telling like the stage manager type that like, this is like, what is happening? You guys can fire me at any time. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't think contribute to any of this. Oh my God, right, I love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Question number three. Let's see if you know this one. The Man in the High Castle is a Philip K. Dick book turned into a TV series that streams on what platform? Amazon. It is Amazon. And that one wasn't even really about a sci-fi novel. I kind of danced around it just in case you uh, didn't know anything about it, but maybe you, you knew that it streamed on Amazon and you still knew it. Well, so it's, show. yeah, it's now entering. I do watch it and um, uh, I got into it. It's now into the, it's kind of out of the realm of what the book was about. It's yeah. now entering like other dimension. It is getting kind of sci-fi now. Like are they, uh, are they in the castle multiple, yet? Multiple <laughs> dimension stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Are they? Did they get into the castle? Is there? Is there? Is there one large castle? <laughs> well, that, yeah. Well, I mean, kind of. Oh, really? Weird, yeah. So, okay. It's. Um, I, I. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. They have. I think. <laughs> 
they found they right. found the device and let them in. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right on track. Yeah. Here's number four. In the Hunger Games, Catching Fire, the island Katniss Everdeen competes on resembles the shape of a what? So this is oh, the, God. This, this, is the again? this is the second book and movie. The Hunger Games Catching Fire, Katniss has to compete in the tournament again, this time on a island in the shape of a what? I have no idea. This is not this one's not on <laughs> I, I mean it's on my radar, but it, I haven't like got this deep into this one. Um I'm just gonna throw a wild guess. Uh and um it's in the shape of um a, uh, it's in the shape <laughs> of an acoustic guitar. Oh my God! Wouldn't that be great? And it's just a rock opera. The whole second one just strays yeah. from the first <laughs> one. <laughs> it I is. Uh, I was just looking at. I was just looking at my acoustic guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it is in the what shape. Is it? I have no it's, idea. it's the shape of a clock. So this was, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of this series. I listened to it on tape driving around the Midwest doing comedy. Uh, I don't know, whenever these came out and, um, I really liked the first book. So I'm like, all right. And then I kind of liked the second book and I thought the third book was like real bad. Um, but the middle book was cool because, and they did a really good job of it. I thought in the movie, um, this Island, it's like they're on an Island and they, there's all these things attacking them to try and kill them. But like, they notice that it starts to shift. So like when they're in different pie shapes from the center of the island going outward, they're in these different trap zones. You know what I mean? So like when, yeah. the, when the island moves, the tra- I think the traps move. So they like figure that out and they use it to kill each other. It's crazy. So I just thought it was a really cool idea and it always stuck with me. So that's where I got that question from. I like. I think the most I dipped in the Hunger Games was seeing the movie once. Yeah, and, and then and that was about it. I haven't read any of the books. I think I saw the first movie. Yeah, once, and yeah. that was like the most of it. Right. I think I only saw I'm the sure first. Everyone, two movies. everyone probably is mad at me. <laughs> I'm sure that you're gonna be mad. I know that has a big fan base. It just never. Yeah. I. You know, I love stuff like that. Like I, I kind of got into. Maze Runner a little bit, and I like yeah. the classics that are in this ballpark, like um, Lord of the Flies, like stuff like that. Sure, but sure. I never dipped into to this one. Well, very good. You, uh, you're you on track so far. That's the only one you missed. You missed. Uh, you got the first three. That's your first miss. Let's see if you can get the rest of these. Here's number five. In the book Flowers for Algernon, what kind of animal uh-huh. is Algernon? He's a mouse. He is a mouse. I had to read that in seventh oh. grade. Had to read that in seventh grade is, and I think the movie's called Charlie, right? Which is the guy's name. Yeah, the movie's yeah, the movie's Charlie. I just actually a couple weeks ago reread the short story. I read yeah because you had it was a, it was a very standard school. I remember reading it. Yeah, uh, the novel in school. I never read the short story, and I'm kind of hoping that they come out with like a new version of the movie because the Charlie the movie's kind of old and it didn't really it was kind of based on. I, I wanted yeah. to make just a straight up. Uh, Based, it, it's a hard. It's one of those sci-fi's that's really hard. It's kind of um, uh, like uh, how they how they always had a hard time making Vonnegut uh, uh, books into movies because it has that sort of. Uh, it's based on journals, so it has yeah. to be done in like first person. It'd be a sure. hard movie. To make. Yeah, I remember watching Charlie in seventh grade and being like, get me out of this week-long nightmare, because it was like very drab and kind of boring, and like, you know, there's lots of lab- I mean, laboratory yeah, not, scenes, and it's not a yeah, fun movie to watch in school. It's um, not a feel-good sci-fi, but it definitely yeah. is like based on science that I could certainly see, uh, it's what they would say, hard science, like science yeah. based on like real, I could really see in our immediate future them coming out with some sort of... Um, operation that could could enhance the brain i don't know that's yeah. kind of what that's about yeah. i think in the movie there's a sex scene once he, <laughs> once his mind starts working differently and um i think in the movie there's a sex scene of some kind and i remember the te- our teacher her name was mama d her name was mrs dumetz but she made everyone mm-hmm. call her mama yeah. d and she was kind of like like the character martin lawrence plays in big mama's house but like a real person oh. And yeah. she was like, all right. She used to call the, all of us babies instead of kids. So she'd go, all right, babies, there's going to be a dirty scene on the screen. When it happens, tell Mama D 
and then cover your eyes. <laughs> and so none of none of us covered her eyes, and she looked up and realized it was on and just screamed at the top of her lungs. And oh, uh, man. that whole yeah. image of that happening in my head will never leave me. Uh, and I think she did almost <laughs> the exact same thing when she made us watch Forrest Gump, which was weird that she made us watch that in seventh grade as well, because I feel like that's more of a high school movie, but I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I love teachers that had that style of teaching. So oh, I had yeah. a lot of those too. They're like, where, where all you remember from a specific class is watching a lot of movies and just <laughs> yeah. loving that teacher for that reason. Yeah. Like, is a movie teacher. Yeah, the movie <laughs> and teacher. you got no education, but yeah. they were the fun movie <laughs> yeah. teacher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Here's question number six. Who was the author of The Giver? Who wrote The Giver? Oh, man. I love this book. Great book. I love this book, too, and I don't know. I'm just totally blinking. Good book, not oh, so great movie with Taylor yeah, it's Swift. Yeah, the classic one I read in school. I just saw the movie. Movie like had some cool parts, but overall not so great. Right, not that good. But and this was like the one big book by this author too. Like they didn't yeah. have like, uh, I don't know. I'm blanking. Lois Lowry. Lois Lowry. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was a tough one. Double L. That's how I always kind of remember that. And then I always remember the gold emblem on the cover of the book because uh, it won so many awards when it first came out and it was like yes that I, is one yeah. that i'll never forget like yeah. the cover of yep. because it was like one of those classic like, it was always in the library of my school yep and um i remember it was one that was kind of controversial because i went to uh, uh a lutheran school like i went to a church school yeah and just some of the themes of that and the new society kind of stuff of that book like didn't jive well with the bible <laughs> and i remember oh, yeah, it being yeah. kind of like they like didn't weren't like hip to us reading it on our own. And it was one of those that they were trying to control how much of it we took in, but it was sure. like a super popular book of that time. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, here's question number seven. We got four more questions okay. left. Number seven: What kind of dog does Will Smith's character have in I Am Legend? Now, I didn't cross-reference this to see if it's the same in the book, but I just assume. So, if someone's listening and says, yeah, well, "Actually, in the, in the book, book, it's a whatever." What kind of dog? God, I'm trying to picture it. I know I've seen a movie twice. Uh, yeah, I love the original too with uh, uh, Charlton Heston. Oh, I don't. What's um, is it called? I Am Legend. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, and it's got a different title. I think it's just uh, uh, the one or the only or uh, oh, okay. Legend. Maybe it's just Legend. It's okay. something like that. But the, gotcha. it is based. There was a. a old, uh, I think maybe late seventies, eighties oh, okay. version of it. I didn't know that. I'll have to look that up. Um, there's dog. I'm going to say it's a bigger dog. I'm going to say it's a German Shepherd. It is a German Shepherd. Nice job. Uh, yeah. I just remember really feeling for that dog in that movie. <laughs> that, yeah, but I, 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 I'm i surprised at my memory that I just sort of have a vague memory. Uh, it's one of those weird things that when you have to piece together visually what it was, like I know that movie really well, but it, it's the, the what type of dog is very vague in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I, I just remember. The there. I just remember. I that much. Yeah, golfing with a dog. That's what I remember about that movie and some zombies. Uh, here oh, comes the end of that movie. It's crazy. Like the way yeah. they just totally yeah. change up everything in the Will Smith version. Yeah, very crazy. Oh yeah. Here's I'm, number. I want to spoil it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> go watch it right now. Number eight. Yeah. World War Z was written by the son of what famous director? Um. Uh. Brooks Albert Brooks. Uh, not Albert Brooks. Well, his, who, who was the son? Who was the name of the... So the famous director I was looking for has the name Brooks, but not Albert Brooks. Max Brooks. Uh, Max Brooks is the son who wrote the book, but who's his dad? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying Albert Brooks. Um, I know that you know it, for sure. I know I know it. I, I'm just, my brain's not working. <laughs> <laughs> he directed, uh, uh, he directed Spaceballs. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. There you go. Right, right, right at the end. <sighs> Right before I said oh, Spaceballs, you got Albert, it. Well, Albert Brooks is a comedian who is also the writer. It's and Ray also Brooks. a director, yeah. Same. Albert Brooks has confused him. Well, yeah, of course, Mel Brooks, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's number nine. In what book does Meg Murray search for her missing scientist father, Alexander Murray? Oh. In what, what are the names again? In what book does Meg Murray search for her missing scientist father, Alexander Murray? It's pretty oh. vague, but we got some character names. And a missing scientist father. Yeah. Missing scientist father. I never read this. There is a movie. I think it just got added to this Netflix. It's like so familiar sounding to me. I know I've read this and I'm going to kick myself. 
in my butt. Um, <laughs> Mer- I don't know. Hit me with it. A wrinkle in time. Yes, of course. A wrinkle in time. The, yeah, of course. Wrinkle time. That was another, along with The Giver, was a big... Yeah, right around the same time, book. I feel yeah. like, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, you've only missed three, so let's see if you can nail this last one. This is number 10. What Stephen King novel was voted number one by a Rolling Stone poll from readers of his fiction? So in a Rolling Stone poll, readers said this was their favorite book by far of Stephen King's. Oh, man. There's so many to... I would Narrow say, I would of all, say, all of Stephen King, all of Stephen King's stuff, his most epic, best overall reader loved book. <laughs> and it is more, sci- it is shine. more sci, shine. it is more sci-fi than okay. uh, horror. Um, I'd say. Um, the, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the name of the, the tower. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Tower is that series tower is that? Yeah, are you thinking of the Dark Tower series? Like all the, I think the Dark the, Tower. The Dark Tower is a great guess, but it's actually the Stand. The Stand. Oh yeah. The yeah, stand. that's like a post-apocalyptic thing, right? I've never read it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it's about. It's like eleven hundred um, pages. It was one of his most his longest book for a while, I think, and uh, and people love it. I guess as 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 fans of his. Well, that's go. one. Yeah. I, you, I, uh, I'm glad you brought it up because that's always been on my radar as a book I should read that I've never read. There you go. Like Next it, time you're on a, a flight, stands out as one that's like, why have I never read that? Next time you're in a green room with scientists, just bust out your eleven hundred page copy of The Stand and ignore them. Well, that would be a good one. That would be a good, uh, you mentioned it earlier, a good, like, while on the road as a comedian book on tape situation. Yeah. And now with Audible. There's yeah. a commercial for Audible. I, <laughs> I just dipped into a commercial for Audible. But I've been addicted to that lately. Like, I'll just do yard work and stuff around the house while sure. uh, catching. I, I listen to a lot of, like, old Arthur C. Clarke and stuff like that. Yeah. There you go, dude. Well, you got uh, you got six out of ten, and you were really on a roll there at the beginning. And the ones you missed, I feel like, were subject to miss. Those are uh, hard because they're kind of goofy. Yeah, and stuff that would yeah, not in my wheelhouse. And the, <laughs> uh, man, stuff that I'm really I should know the author of the giver. But yeah, that's a good good. Good, hard question. Awesome, dude. Well, thanks for doing it. And uh, next time I have you on, we'll do some wrestling WCW cruiserweight division trivia. And uh, and then maybe we'll have you on a third time. And we'll do well, that. Now, uh, now, if you would do WCW, I'm, I'm expecting 10 out of 10 for myself. <laughs> so that would be big. Like, I, yeah. Very good. I, I, will, I will expect nothing less than 10 out of 10. Love it, love it. I'm going to have you on again very soon. We'll do that. Anything you want to plug uh, before you take off? Um, yeah, just um, make sure, please watch the uh, season three of um, Those Who Can't on True TV when it comes out. Okay. <laughs> and I'll let you know. I'll let you know when it comes out. Follow me at, at Andy underscore Peters. Very good. Tweet. And I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to insert earlier into this episode, people will have already heard it, but if they want to hear it again, they can rewind it. In the intro, I'm going to put your clip that kind of went viral on uh, Facebook about, was it self yeah, che- yeah, self checkouts? Yeah, was yeah. that the one that got the most views? That is, yeah, that's, that is uh, probably my first ever uh, internet blow up. I'm not sure. It's a, it's a comedy special I did in Utah, and yeah. uh, they're a great company, Drive Bar Comedy, and a lot of their stuff, a lot of their clips online go like super, super viral. So yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked about how that one's doing right now. Very cool, man. And uh, again, Andy underscore Peters on Twitter and stuff. And uh, thanks for taking the time, Andy. Appreciate it, man. I miss you. And of I course. hope to see you soon. We'll go to a wrestling show and uh, we'll bond. Please. Always a pleasure, man. Awesome. <laughs> Boom. There it is. A quick quiz with a funny dude. Follow Andy underscore Peters on Twitter. He's so damn funny. I love talking to that guy, and uh, I hope to have him back on very, very soon. Thanks for listening to this show, guys. Rewards are going out in the next few days at the beginning of October. So if you want to support the show, see all the cool stuff you can get over at patreon.com slash trivia with buds we have uh trading cards we have coloring sheets we have coloring books we have enamel pins we have t-shirts we have uh the ability for me to send you all the questions i write for all my live trivia nights in the month at the highest tier of 50 bucks if you donate 50 bucks i'll send you everything that i use to run my live events maybe you're a trivia host maybe you're thinking about doing it it is a great way to get started in that industry uh, and you got a bunch of content coming from me monthly. So think about doing that. Think about supporting the show for a buck. Uh, whatever you want to do would be awesome. 
uh, awesome of you. Uh, very fun episodes coming up this week, and uh, there's a really cool one coming up from a trivia party that I helped prepare but wasn't even at. That's right. Some friends in Michigan that listened to the show recorded audio from their trivia party that I wrote questions for, and we're going to uh, make that into an episode. So get ready for that. It's going to be very, very cool. You're going to love it. Thanks for listening to this show. Thanks for telling a friend about it, and we'll see you tomorrow for more trivia with Buds. Cheers. Thank you.